welcome to the Media Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Say that, young listener. Have you considered nepotism? <laughs> no, what's that about? Why, it's the latest social trend that will get you everything you want for all the wrong reasons. Yay? Of course, you have to know someone famous. Uh, do you count? No, fair squire. <laughs> I'm merely known as Horse Famous, which is really fake fame. <laughs> Anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review uh, My Little Pony Season 9, Episode 20, uh, Horseshoe Inn. In this episode, Starlight Greenwood decides to hire a vice mayor, a uh, vice hate mayor, in preparation to take over the school of friendship from Twilight. So, yay, it's just gonna be me and you, Silver, and well, uh, first impressions are in order. What do you think? Well, I have to add one small correction. I think she's hiring a replacement counselor. As she becomes uh, the head mayor, someone else has to take over the counseling role. Uh, at the start of the uh, episode, she hasn't really considered that as a priority. Well, in either case, she has to hire someone very important role of staff. <laughs> a role that I don't think Starlight was ever properly qualified to fulfill. True so, so, yeah. <laughs> Starlight as a counselor has always been something of a d uncomfortable aspect of the School of Friendship, <laughs> mostly because she does not have the training, patience, or empathy. She's an intelligent mayor. She, I think she'll actually make a very good head mayor, but she's not really a good counselor. Well, um, the person that's replacing her is questionable at best. Well, we'll get to that in due time. <laughs> true that, true that. Anything more to add there? Well, like I joked, this, this episode is very heavy on the idea of nepotism in the form of Trixie. And boy, Trixie can be such a, a hit or miss character. I feel like in this episode, her attitude becomes more grating. But there are flashes of enjoyment. So it's a back and forth. It's I'm on a roller coaster of emotion. I don't know how to cope. But I think that's what they wanted out of Trixie. Like that grading thing like oh god like you're just coasting your way blah, blah 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 i mean we will talk more about that later but you know what i mean right yes i do so anywho as for me this episode was a lot of fun i i love the way that starlight is just trying to find the best candidates and whatnot and you know what um a, a simple resume would have done wonders but uh, put them on the test. Yeah, I mean, that's one way to do it. Honestly, I feel like that's a better way than just a resume. Yeah, true that, true A that. resume is just a summary of experiences. You don't get to see the person in action. Yeah, true that, true that, true that. But anywho, um, if you guys at home have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So anywho, uh, we start off the episode with Starlight watering her plants, talking to it. I heard that talking to your plants makes it grow better and stuff, but I don't know. The way that Starlight's doing it is a bit creepy. Well, I think it'd only really be creepy if the plants started talking back. Oh, that's normal. What's that, Phyllis? You think I should rule Equestria? <laughs> oh. You want me to do what to Twilight? <laughs> oh, we can't do that, Phyllis. Who would clean up the mess? Feed me, Seymour! Oh, I think we had that in Equestria Girls. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. So, anywho, carrying on, uh, Twilight pops into Starlight's office, uh, talking or asking her if she is free to talk or not. The reason for her visit is that she wants to fulfill a promise that she did before, and said promise is to put her in position of head mayor of the school of friendship um Twa starlight says yes and she's happy for it and panics a little because she's not sure if she's ready for the job or not uh title intro plays and starlight and trixie were supposed to go out for lunch but starlight wants to meet up with twilight first to discuss things about her plan, or actually Trixie's idea to Starlight, where 
why not hire a hitman to fulfill, well, to help you with your job? So Starlight goes to Twilight about the idea and says, yeah, that would be a great idea. Um, I, I like it. I like it. Go do so. Yay. And Trixie pops in and says, oh, cool. That, that is a wonderful position. I will take it. But if you have to do the test, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you go do so. So I'm going to pause here. So Silva, what do you think? You were right. I'm getting all mixed up. It is hiring a vice head mayor. And it's a good idea, assuming that, well, it's not Discord. <laughs> but in all honesty, Discord would have been pretty cool. It would have been awful. Really? Uh, this, look, Discord, I like Discord, but I would not put him in a position of that authority or influence over young minds. I mean, look at how badly he performed when he when he felt slighted. You know how much disrespect a, a, a principal has to contend with? <laughs> a from a, from kids, no less? A lot, a lot. But still, I mean, if, if you have Discord... Those little punks. <laughs> true, true. I mean, you take Discord from uh, a matter of principles, and you take Discord from the holiday comic where he pretends to be the uh, their version of the Krampus. He's been the mortal enemy of these students more often than not. I mean, uh, you know what? I'm going to excuse. It's a lot of fun to have Discord as vice principal. <laughs> it would be it would be chaos. Oh, how thematic! I know. <laughs> but anywho, you, you get anything more to say? Well, I love, I do love uh, Starlight's praise of Trixie. You give good advice when you don't mean to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Maybe that's the highest praise Trixie can receive this episode. But once again, she is left pining for Starlight's attention. This is true, but at the same time, too, wouldn't it be fun to work with your friends and whatnot? Oh, God, no. Oh, man. Years of experience have told me that working with your friend is going to be a nightmare. It may be a way to cull some friendships. I know. I know. Uh, boy. Welcome to the Purge. <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, sorry for stealing your thunder. Anything else to add? Not just yet. All right. Then. As for me, I like the setup. I really like the setup where uh, Trixie gives an idea about, okay, um, here's how you're going to uh, run the school you're gonna have you're gonna hire a hitmare a hitmare will clearly help you with the job like it will help you delegate some of the tasks and whatnot blah 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 blah, blah. so Trixie gives really good ideas and Twilight agrees with it because she too uh, what you would call this relies on her friends for help on dealing stuff so yeah lead by example and whatnot but Trixie here thinking that she's got the job, like wink wink dash dash. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> oh man. I'm not saying wink wink. <laughs> What's wrong with you? So anywho, gotta carry on. The next scene we see candidates for the vice hitmare. And we have um Trixie, Big Mac, Octavia, Doctor Hooves. And also spoil rich, pining for the job. So, Starlight here devises a three-step plan to gauge or to interview the candidates. So, um, one of the first stages is to substitute the teachers because when the teachers are away on adventure, whatever it is, uh, they need to call in subs. And I think this has been shown previously before with. Uh, mod, Spitfire, and a few other ponies I don't really remember. So yeah, it's been done before, and you know what? Sometimes Vice Principal needs to do some of the task. Uh, Silver, do you think we need to speed up this or go through one at a time? I think it'd be fun to talk about the. How about we talk about each candidate and how they perform through these tests? Ah, all right then. So. We start off the first stage with uh, Big Mac. He is taking care of Rarity's class while Rarity is there. And he managed to sew up a shirt. And Ocellus 
uh, praising for that and says, "Oh, you learn how to sew by being uh, by sewing apples." I, I don't remember the phrase, but it's just like you knew how to do this because you work on the farm. So that is so cool. That is so good. And using your mouth, bet that stings. Ouch. Yes, he learned this from mending apple sacks on the farm and <sighs> probably caring for his younger sister's clothing or or needs. True. You know, true. He had to step up as a sort of a parental figure at times. True, true. That's yeah, sort a of good father or not. And yes, that makes sense. And Starlight likes what he sees. She goes to the next candidate, and the next candidate is Spoiled Rich. And the way she... You know what? She's not wrong, but morally, it's morally bankrupt. Loyalty is great, and the best way to get loyalty is through money. So learn business. <laughs> what? Uh, why she even thought she could get this job? I mean, when your own daughter tells you you have no friends, the school of friendship is something of a lost cause. But money... Yes, you have money! So you can buy all of the bucks I have to give. But money! <laughs> oh wait, I don't have any for sale, because I have none. <laughs> there are no bucks to give about your future at this school. Thank you, come again. Oh boy. But anywho, next candidate is Octavia, and she's teaching, or she's subbing for Pinkie Pie, and I, I, I'm not sure essential what Pinkie Pie's class is, but I'm guessing music? Well, all I know is it's the return of the Uvidaphone, something that I never expected to see. Yeah. Or hear. <laughs> I never wanted to hear. Again. <laughs> I'm guessing it works. And Octavia uh, teaches the class with fine colors, so that's awesome. So next up on the list is Doctor Who's with kindness or pet sitting. I don't know. He created contraption to feed birds. Like what? Felicia is happy with it? I don't know. I'm at a loss for words. Well, he, he's a scientist at heart. He needs to make a contraption that could be automated. Auto-feeding animals to help. Which, honestly, Fluttershy should ask him for some advice on uh, caring for sweet feather sanctuary animals. <laughs> because, again, she needs helpers. True that, true that. I mean, you can always call robots to help the job. I mean, there's nothing wrong with robots. Until they gain self-awareness and then uh, try to take over Sweet Feather Sanctuary. Exterminate! <laughs> Exterminate! Yeah, no comment. But anywho, uh, next up on the list is Trixie. And Trixie teaches history. And she's bored, blah, blah, blah. Everybody in class is bored and everybody sleeps and takes a nap. And you know what? Naps is good. I love naps. You love naps? Yeah, a nap can be quite refreshing. Yay! But Starlight doesn't like naps. So let's go to the results. Uh, so everybody on the list except for Spoiled Rich passes the quote-unquote test. Trixie pops in saying that, okay, um, maybe no naps in this school. Whatever you say, Starlight. I mean, you're the boss. I'm just going to follow what you say. But Gallus did teach me how to go do good naps. Yay. <laughs> Uh, but still, red signs are about. And then I'm going to pause here. And I'm going to go first. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I like the process of picking or weeding out the unworthy. And sub subbing is one of those tasks that vice principals needs to do. And uh, looking at the scenario here, uh, it's... Okay, I, I'm not 100% sure how it will do in the long run because each student or each teacher handles different classes in different scenarios. So a vice principal here has to be a jack of all trades kind of deal. And that's going to be hard. But we'll see, we'll see. And well, Spoil Rich's plan for business school is... Not working well for her. Yeah. And Trixie, if she's not motivated to teach history, why teach history? Whose class is she teaching, by the way? Mm, Applejack? I guess, but Applejack teaches history? I don't remember that. Well, why not? She's the, she's one of the most tradition-based uh, ponies. 
Hmm, I guess, but she's not even in class. Like, well, because she, because probably because she actually had to go step away for the Apple family. I got to get back to work on my other full time all day job. Then, Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> then why Big Mac is there? See, it was ex it don't make no sense. Oh, it's circular logic. She has to go to the farm to fill in for things because her brother's not there because he's there learning how to fill in for her. <laughs> And basically, it's all just a circular logic that will explode. Indeed. Anywho, that's all my thoughts for this segment. What about you? Well, I guess I, I you know, if this were a reality TV show, Spoiled Rich would, would stay in it just to provide the dramatic villain. <laughs> the tension. Oh, no, don't let her be. And we'd get great ratings. But I'm glad that she was kicked early on. <laughs> At, but here's where nepotism comes in. Because while three of the candidates did exceptionally well, Trixie was a complete and total goof. And Starlight should have just put her hoof down there, but because they're friends and because it is actually quite difficult to say no to a friend at times, Starlight caves. And it's not that I'm denouncing Starlight because I know how hard that can be. You don't want to disappoint them or you don't want them to be abandoned or to do a blow to their confidence. It's kind of like the lesson Fluttershy learned with the Breezy. Sometimes to show the most care, you have to harden your heart. That is true. That is true. But anywho, uh, let's continue on. And so we start with stage two. Uh, Starlight just congratulates the one that are here and says that, okay, you know what, guys? Uh, we Let's move on to the next uh, test. And next test is parent-teacher conference. Yay! That, that, is so much, that is so much fun. But at the same time here too, just to save on time, I'm going to uh, add in part three, which is a field trip. But let's uh, start off with the first candidate, which is Octavia. Octavia sits down with Ocellus' uh, parents or guardians. Um, changings are confusing. And... Uh, they have a really good talk and discussion. So, yay, that is awesome. And on the following uh, third stage is field trips. So, Octavia sends our students to the boring concert hall and wants to show them, yo, this is classical music mixed with dubsteps. Isn't that nice? And yay, Gallus is entertained by dubsteps. Woohoo! Cal is the most difficult student to keep engaged. True, that, unless it's all about bits. <laughs> so, uh, Octavia seems a perfect candidate, right? Uh, honestly, she strikes me as the strongest candidate. True that, true that. So, anywho, uh, let's move on to the second uh, teacher, and that is Dr. Hooves. Dr. Hooves is talking to the Yak delegate and telling them that Yona here has a mind for science and if nurtured she could be the best and the ex are very happy for the news and says like yay this is awesome uh, we we <laughs> we love you for this and on his field trip he wants to bring them to his lab where uh, he can show them uh, awesome stuff and he wants to show the students time traveling. Starlight Glimmer is not entertained. And. Neither is Smolder. <laughs> yes. But anywho, uh, he reveals a chair and said chair is a time traveling chair. As Smolder to sit down and wait five seconds. And he says that, yay, uh, you travel five seconds in time. And. This is one of those things where he's very philosophical about everybody's in time traveling and whatnot, blah, 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 blah. Um, not a great field trip, but it's better, right? Yay? Okay. Honestly, I'm surprised that Dr. Who's made it through the parent-teacher conferences. Uh, true, that, true that, but he has For, a really easy audience. Oh, I feel like he has the hardest audience. I mean, remember, Yaks will smash anything not perfect. So in a weird way, he, he hosted the perfect uh, parent-teacher, except that he was highly speciesist. 
Really? Yoda has taken to huh? Yoda has taken to science like a yak to smashing. That, sir, is highly offensive. But at the same time, too, it's genius because it's playing up to the yak's interest. And well, yaks like smash. Smash is good, so play up to their well, kind of ego. So it's smart there. I d I don't know. I could picture Yoda's parents walking back to the train and be like, "Hey, wait." He imply very, very hurtful stereotype. But it's... Yaks destroy! But at the same time, it's true. Oh, well, oh, oh, I see, I see. Uh, if their stereotypes exist for a reason, is that what you're saying, Norman? No, I mean... Maybe, <laughs> maybe there's a quiet, gentler yak out there who doesn't like to smash. Have you thought of that? Oh, man, there's nothing wrong How with you. could you, sir? <laughs> How could you, sir? I will act morally offended for everyone and proceed with violence. <laughs> But anywho, um, let's move on to the next candidate and Trixie. Trixie, uh, hmm. let's just say that Trixie gets into a shouting match with Grandpa Gruff, and um, for her field trip, she brought in a uh, Froggy Bottom Bog to the classroom, and somehow brought along. A creature that we haven't seen in a while, the flesh bees. So yeah, that that uh, yeah. Let's just say that that was not the brightest plan in the book. Yeah. Well, in some ways, it was the catalyst as it finally got Starlight to be brutally and I think aggressively honest with with Trixie. True, true, and that that hurt the feelings and whatnot. But uh, let's before we continue on with that uh, plot, let's talk about Big Mac because he is one of the other candidates to make it true. And Big Mac is talking to the hippogriffs and uh, the guardian for Silverstream. And have you ever been into a parent-teacher conference where? You can only ask yes or no questions. Nope. And how does that turn out if it was something like that? Probably very short. And bad. Is my child doing good? Yes. Anything you have him change? No. Okay, have a good night. Yes. <laughs> uh, but, but still, um, Big Mac here is not cut out for the job because, okay, he can do the job, but because of his... I won't say vow of silence because he can speak. It's just that he doesn't want to speak a lot. That, that That's the thing with Big Mac here. The only thing that is holding him back is his lack of vocabulary, for lack of better words. And he doesn't get the chance to do his field trip because he turned down the position. Even though he is a good candidate for the job, but because he couldn't really express things or talk about the students in length he doesn't feel like he's qualified for the job and promptly uh, turns down the position which starlight gracefully accepts well he w i don't think he would have made the cut either way but yeah it's good that he's willing to acknowledge that limitation and hey he might have just secured himself as a substitute teacher down the road true true but it's mostly self-imposed if you think about it big mac can talk if he wants to but i'm guessing that every time when big mac talks it lends him into hot water or conjures a past trauma about nearly losing his leg <laughs> yeah true that so anywho let's get back to trixie because trixie here has uh well because of her actions of bringing the bog to class she puts the students in danger faculty in danger and disregards all safety for the students and that crosses the line for starlight and starlight tells trixie off and also told her that she was never qualified to begin with and that hurts trixie's feeling and she walks away twilight pops in and kind of cleans up the mess and kind of also talks to starlight about 
what she have done wrong and how to fix it. So I'm going to pause here. So Silver, um, what do you think? That was a lot. So um, summarize whatever you need to summarize. And I think we can focus on Trixie more. Well, this is the dynamic between Starlight and Trixie. It is like a rubber band. You stretch things as taut and as tense as they can until finally there's a breaking point where it snaps together and a collision between both ends. Then, of course, there's a little, there's a moment of pain, and then you untangle things. They are the rubber, rubber band friends, yes. <laughs> so, and we've seen it in, what is it, not the road, we didn't call it the road to friendship. Uh, or did we? No, um, let me try and check. I love that episode a lot. Um, that was, what, season two? Emerged. No, season eight, was it? And it was earlier on. Horse play, the parent trap. Oh man. Road to it was called Road to Friendship. Oh really no. It was called Road to Friendship and then there was all bottled up. And uh now this. Trixie has this way of antagonizing Starlight. Starlight is not great at expressing herself, you know, being vulnerable. And so this creates a continual conflict that always seems to reach a very uh, explosive moment. And then it's an, oh no, what have I done? So this, and I, I enjoy it because not all friendships are as smooth and as polished as the main six. Uh, all Bottled Up made it a point to emphasize the difference between them. <laughs> so I appreciate that the show is, is demonstrating that not all, fr not all friendships are smooth and easy. That sometimes it takes a lot of apologizing and back and forth and maybe one day they'll they'll find their rhythm and starlight will be more comfortable expressing herself to trixie and avoiding these explosive moments but they're not there yet well, true that they're about five seasons behind the main six oh, yeah, that's also true but i have an idea i'm gonna save it till we reach the end so anyhow um let's carry on so starlight goes to trixie's caravan which is outside of the school uh, which we call this castle of friendship. Yep, she apparently doesn't want to lodge in the highly posh and easily available castle, which has multiple rooms, by the way. Although, in fairness, it also has a huge infestation of bugs. Depending on the location, <laughs> uh, but still, Starlight goes to Trixie's caravan and talks to her and apologizes for her actions. She doesn't. She should have been honest with Stryer. Trixie from the very beginning and says that she's sorry and Trixie too apologizes for her action and uh, she should have known better and she knew that Starlight was really serious about the position and whatnot and now uh, Trixie uh, says that okay um, you have a few candidates that are available like what Dr. Hoof and also Octavia. And Starlight just says, yeah, those two are not interested in the job just because Dr. Hoof wants to pursue more scientific endeavors and Octavia just wants to make sure that she has time for her music. And Trixie comes up with a plan to find the perfect vice principal. And... She comes up with the bright idea of, well, hiring uh, Sunburst. Sunburst is smart, Sunburst is a friend, and Sunburst is... What was it again? I forgot. Detail-oriented, like Twilight? Yes, that too. So, he is quote-unquote the perfect candidate for the job. Yay! So with that, Sunburst got the job, and Starlight asked a very important question, and said question is, wait, if you're going to teach here, what about your position as the crystalling or crystaller for Baby Flurry? And he just says that, oh, um, now that she's a bit older and can do stuff, uh, mostly I'm there for tradition. So most of the time I will have nothing to do. So this is going to be something fun. Yay. And with that, the position of vice principal is filled and principal is also filled. Now we have a 
new what you call this position open to the student counselor and Starla is just tricksy for the job and she accepts yay and with that episode ends so silver what do you think well there's one aspect that we kind of skipped over mm -hmm. uh trixie gets this student council job because she's the only one ever willing to to push back against grandpa gruff i mean gallus actually praised her for it which is a rather startling idea mm -hmm. but i i think mostly it's because for support for the student because um also what uh Gallus says that nobody ever believed in him like how Trixie did and that's important but I'm actually uh talking about the characterization of Grandpa Gruff himself mm -hmm. also well consider that in Dragon Dropped Gabby mentioned that she ran a lot of mail for Gallus because Grandpa Gruff wanted regular check-ins that's check-ins not chickens easy to get mixed <laughs> up okay so, but then he comes to the school and makes a very big show about how he doesn't have time or doesn't see why he has to put up with this, yada, yada. So, there are a couple interesting ideas that come with this. One is that Grandpa Gruff is putting on an act. He's actually very interested in uh, Gallus's progress, but... Because he doesn't want Gallus to become entitled or lazy, he makes a he makes a big show of not offering support. So there might be a plan there. Or two, Grandpa Gruff's not the one reading those letters. He's just lending his name to whomever is interested. At which point we're left to wonder what's going on. Why is Gallus? Does Gallus have someone else? Mm, good theory. Good theory. I, just, I I find it interesting. I know that the end that uh, the last problem doesn't really cover any of this. It just sort of gives Gallus a mm, not an ending, but a it talks about the next stage of his life. I don't know if there's anything bigger, but I was very intrigued when I realized this contradiction from the episode. But I, um, but the way that Grandpa Gruff here is, uh, how Grandpa Gruff acts here is, it it could be one of those situations where I'm a busy Griffin dealing with Griffin Stone. Have you seen how that place is? And you asking me to come here just to have updates about my charge is a waste of time. I send letters every week to us about him, so I already know. So it's one of those situations where, to him, this is a waste of time because he, like I mentioned before, he already knows with the letter back and forth from Gabby. So when you look at it that way, it does make sense. But at the same time, too, you would love to talk to a teacher about your students and or your charge and whatnot to have a better understanding from the teacher's point of view but still if you look at it that way yes chromograph is a busy person and having him to come all the way down to ponyville is a quote-unquote waste of time uh, i would say this uh if you have uh, a child or a, ch <laughs> a, per a person you've taken care of and uh, study in let's say canada and you have to go to Canada for a parent-teacher conference that you already know how your kid is. So, eh, it's kind of waste of time, if you ask me. Well, I, that raises the question of, is he in charge of Griffin Stone? Because he didn't look to be. True, but he is, quote-unquote, the oldest and, quote-unquote, qualified. I don't know. Nobody really does anything Griffin Stone. Griffin Stone is confusing, mostly because who's in charge now that there's no king? Yeah, and the economy. How's that working out for them? Who knows? Yep. yep. Anyway, mm -hmm. I was kind of hope that Gallus would assume the throne. Uh, same here, same here. But at the same time, too, uh, I think it's still too early for him to assume the throne. He needs to mature a bit more. 
Well, not, yeah, not not like right out of graduating, but maybe after his stint as Twilight's guard. True, true. Uh, but what else? Is about? Um, we talked about Grandpa Gruff. What else? Well, okay, I love the grin on Starlight when uh, when she's talking to Sun Sunburst about being the vice principal. I mean, uh, she's just like, my kind of boyfriend will be closer to me. <laughs> uh, yay. Oh, man. That, that is going to be a confusing relationship. <laughs> my stallion. <laughs> oh, boy. So, anywho, um, is, that, is that all silver? Well, I mean, we should have a moment of silence for Phyllis, I guess. Oh, yeah. Poor Phyllis. She will be missed. And a diss against Starlight. <laughs> Potted plants just scream desperation. Well, technically, in this scenario, yes. <laughs> but maybe, uh, maybe she should have named the plant Sunburst. That would definitely show oh. a certain desperation. Oh yeah, that, that's also true. That's also true. So anyway, um, as for me, like I mentioned before, I like this episode. The contrast of Trixie and Starlight is always fun. Them bantering and stuff. It's it's fun. It's it's fun to see them at odds at each other sometimes. And here's what I was thinking in my head for head cannon's sake. Like uh, Trixie points out the idea of okay, um, we have Tri uh, Twi Twilight has her friends helping her out. Why not you have your friends help you out with the interviews for the vice principal role and she calls upon well quote, her quote unquote friends which is a Trixie Torex Discord and who else? Maud and herself? Yes. Who who was the uh, adventurous during season seven was it? The adventurous daring do no 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 oh I mean it's uh Starlight's friend when she was a star for the final season. I'm not sure I understand. Like, we have what? The main six? And we have Starlight's group of friends. And Starlight group of friends was what? Um, Starlight herself, Trixie, Torax, Discord? Oh, oh, you mean, you mean not the final season, but uh, to wear and back again? Yeah. Uh,. Yeah, it was, yeah, Th Thorax, Trixie, Discord, that was it? Ah, yeah, just the four of them. So, I mean, if she would have... The fallback four? Yeah, yeah the know, fallback four. I already, I already gave that term to the ponies from Starlight's hometown. Ah, the unlikely four? Mm, the fallible four? Probably, that's a good one. But uh, having them, like, having them as, uh, or calling upon them for the role... It would be very interesting to have them because obviously Torex couldn't be the vice principal because well he he's he has to rule the changing hive. Discord is well <laughs> let's uh, Discord is Discord. Trixie, yeah, she done goof. And well the best candidate was a Sunburst. I mean having them all like just have Torex, Trixie, Discord, Sunburst, and also Mod. Like, have them do the interview and whatnot. It'll be interesting. I don't know. Dis Again, Discord is not someone I would trust with that level of responsibility. Yeah, but uh, the logic here is is where Starlight is trying to emulate Twilight in terms of, okay, uh, Twilight has her friends, I have my friends. Let's see how this works. <laughs> Terribly. Norman. You're trying to apply logic with Discord. I know. Do you not understand the contradiction? I know. The school would explode from the simple conflict of logic and chaos. I know, but it's a lot yep. of fun. Nor Norman Sansa would kill us all. <clears throat> no, but that, that, that's what I was thinking. It would be a fun comparison between uh, Twilight and her friends and Starlight and her friends. And yeah, you know, in, in the end, it's not a great idea, but it's uh, it's a fun idea. It's a fun idea. That gets everyone killed. <laughs> Probably. But Discord will have Fluttershy to contend with. But anywho, 
uh, that is the review for this week. So, Silver, what are you going to do for next week? Well, I think it's time to return to some nightmares. <laughs> the Nightmare Nights. Ah. And next review, we are going to do issue four. Issue four is going to be the good one. I re- I recently read it, and it is fun. It is fun. Yes, unfortunately, Torterra won't be able to join us, but I know he's been enjoying this series as well. Oh, yeah. I, I hope he still gets a chance to read it, just to keep up. So, anywho. Well, we shall see. Mm-hmm. We shall see. True, true, true. So, anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me in many places. You can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me on Ko-fi and Patreon under Silver Quill, which helps uh, support my channel and keeps things rolling. You can find me on YouTube. Just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, and my devilishly handsome icon will appear. And on Wednesdays, when there's a new comic, you can find me on Equestria Daily, along with possibly an editorial or two. Yay, much awesomeness. And your recent video was really, really entertaining, my friend. Oh, thank you. It was really... I hope the next one will entertain, too. <laughs> uh, it was really informative. I, I like the whole comparison of, uh, how do you put this, serious shows and having their counterparts be funny. Never really thought about it that way, but yeah, uh, Japan loves to do that. Japan loves to do that. America is getting into that trend, but we're still fighting our footing, I think. Yeah, like... The West hasn't, the West hasn't done it a lot, but it's done it in some. Like uh, I remember them doing it for uh, Steven Universe, and they have their gems, which is Chibi. So yeah, they done that before, and I think what Avatar, The Last Airbender did that too. So, um, j- j- uh, how to put this? Westerners have learned from what Japan's been doing, but they haven't been doing it well with some. Uh, You know what? This could have... Go look at Silver's video because it's all there. It's all all there. It's all informative. And uh, trust me, it's a very good watch. What was it? 20 minutes, was it? About 18. Ah, yes. About 18 minutes. And it's a really good 18-minute video. So uh, not a waste of your time. It's really good. Go and watch it on... Where was it again, Silva? On YouTube. Just do a search for After the Fact Pony Life. Yes. Very good, very good. So, anywho, uh, uh, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLife.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. Slash them be a show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. And talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Matty Knight, Amy, Jeffrey, Kristen, and also Mess of Leg. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. And um, with the show on Patreon, the exclusive, uh, what I've been doing recently is Posting the review and discussion podcast in raw format, or not really raw, um, raw and unedited. Basically, you get to hear us derp and flub lines and just be wacky and insane. It's a lot of fun, and I highly recommend go doing or go supporting us there because you get to hear some things that aren't meant to be heard in public by certain people. Isn't that right, Silva? That's not a word! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> that's gonna be fun. So, hey, any... <laughs> Just, hello, sweetie bot. Good to hear from you again. <laughs> sweetie, sweetie bot's been busy. <laughs> uh, boy, so, anywho, uh, well... Uh, so, anyway, uh, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode. Yes, sure. See ya. Adios. So next week, we're going to enter nightmares. All right, I can dig it. Welcome to our nightmare, Alice. Oh, God. No. No.